question 11, I think, is uh, more interesting in connecting to how uh, the kind of predictions that Bohr model makes for, um, for some of the quantities and um, especially since this question says to use the Bohr model even when it gives the wrong answer. Let me work through that and I will uh, tell you in what ways the, um, the Bohr model answer is wrong. Uh, so, so, you know, in the Bohr model, we really start out with the assumption or the, the, the quantum mechanical proposition that the orbital angular momentum of the electron is quantized. So that they only come in these allowed values um, in units of h bar or h divided by two pi um, in integer units of that. So that's our starting place. So, um, so when it's asking about the angular momentum of the electron in n equals a six state, uh, I have that right away. I, the angular momentum here must be six times h bar. Um, I, I don't even need uh, like mass of electron or anything. This is uh, our, because this is our starting place. So I can just plug in the numbers. Let me use Wolfram Alpha so I don't have to look up h bar. Wolfram Alpha actually does understand the h bar, but you can also, um, yeah, I'll put in h bar and it'll tell you how the proper name it likes to use for that. So six times h bar. And uh, the, uh, the common name for h bar is what's called a reduced Planck constant. It's a, uh, um, yeah. I think that's an old from thing. Um, that's really where I usually say it. So six h bar is uh, here. It is that's the unit I want. Uh, Ten to minus fifteen electron volt a second. That's exactly what I want. So uh, three point nine five. And uh, it'll say it's correct. And this is what I want to tell you is uh, physically incorrect. So. Um, so this is coming down in maybe two weeks when we do atomic physics. The, um, the angular momentum of an electron, uh, there are two different quantities that you can talk about. There's uh, the absolute value of angular momentum that you can talk about. And there's the projection of angular momentum you can talk about. And what you're going to learn is for an electron in n equals a six state, it is uh, the angular moment, orbital angular momentum quantum number L, which is going to be limited to five. It's not actually gonna be able to reach six. Six minus n minus one is uh, what it's gonna be able to reach. So when it's at this value uh, or whatever value it's at, the, the magnitude of angular momentum will be given by square root of L times L plus one. You know, this is not something that, um, oh, that I guess times H bar. Um, this is not something that you would guess. <laughs> it's a, it's a, a result that you get uh, going from going through the, the actual solution of the hydrogen atom. And uh, when you look at the projection, this is gonna range from um, the minus L H bar and in the, integer uh, unit difference, so, you know, from that to minus L minus one H bar, all the way up to eventually plus L um, H bar. And so the, the projection could be as big as a five H bar. And so this is gonna be a result that you see in about two weeks. Um, so, um, so this is what the question is getting at. Um, when you use the Bohr model result, some of these results here will be wrong. <laughs> and for the purpose of this question, um, we want to make sure that you understand the semi-classical model of Bohr because that is the place where we do introduce this uh, important idea about angular momentum quantization. So that's what we are focusing on for now. And this is what you will see in about two weeks as we do atomic physics. And as we go through the fully quantum mechanical treatment of the hydrogen atom. 
And so that's all coming. And I guess if, depending on where you are in chemistry, you might have seen all this, which is, you know, great. <laughs> um, so you will see it in physics, physics context again. Uh, for the time being, we'll just uh, pretend that, um, that, um, that, that, that this is correct, even though it's not. Um, Okay, so it's where there's the kinetic energy of the electron in n equals to six state. Um, so here, I think you do have, um, well, um, um, I'll, I'll tell you the answer first or the expression that leads to the answer. And I think you can actually um, look this up in the text above. It's, uh, um, yeah, so so this is how uh, how I have it memorized. Not that you have to have it memorized. So you have that expression for the energy of the electron in the some state that's uh, characterized by n. That's uh, given by minus a thirteen point six eV divided by n squared. And the thing to understand here is that this energy is the total energy meaning this is the energy that you get by uh, the sum of the potential energy plus the kinetic energy. And, um, and so there's a, something called the Virial theorem that actually um, tells you how in general um, for uh, one over our potential, how this uh, potential energy is related to kinetic energy. Uh, I'll just cite the result and, um, and you'll just uh, trust me. Um, so what Virial theorem says is that for where uh, V is uh, one over our potential, the potential energy and kinetic energy are related this way. Potential energy is equal to minus two times the kinetic energy. Um, there's a way you can prove that. So, um, so as an example, for n equals one state, what this means is um, when you go through this, <laughs> potential energy will be equal to minus uh, double of this. So, twenty seven point two eV. Uh, that's going to be my potential energy for n equals one, and so. I remember this minus sign by remembering that my kinetic energy is always positive. So my kinetic energy for this n equals one state is gonna be half of this, um, but with a plus sign, plus 13.6 eV. And when you add these two together, you get minus 13.6 eV that you are expecting. So, so that gives the answer rather quickly. <laughs> so uh, I can work out the, the total energy for n equals to six state. That's gonna be 13.6 divided by six squared. Or um, so for the total energy that would have minus a sign, so minus 0 0.378 eV. And when I'm talking about kinetic energy, that's just gonna be the positive version of that. So plus 0 0.378. And um, yeah, <laughs> and, and uh, wait, where am I? Sorry, I'm, um, so, so yeah. Yeah, <laughs> things if you have it memorized, it's a uh, kind of quick. But uh, in the textbook, you can uh, see these all derived. I don't know how, I don't remember how much of the simplified expression your textbook gives you. Um, and I think when it gets to, uh, your textbook may never give the Simplified expression. Yeah, it doesn't quite. Um, um, but so, you know, if you wanted to work through this from scratch, what you would do is go back to here, go back to ah, this expression for the potential energy and go back to this expression for the kinetic energy. And I think you can actually kind of see the result from Virial theorem here. When you compare the expression for kinetic energy and the expression for potential energy, um, you can match up almost all the terms with a key difference. 
the potential energy has minus sign here. And when you look at the coefficients, the coefficient one over 16 is a double of one over 32. So, um, so what I did there is a kind of a shortcut um, where I don't have to plug in pi, permittivity of free space and all these other constants. Um, okay, so with that, uh, so I think having answered the B, I think I can do C just in my head. It's gonna be minus 0 0.756. And the total energy will be B just with the minus sign by 0 0.78. So the answers to B, C, and D, they are all, um, they are gonna be completely correct in the fully quantum mechanical version. Now, if the question were asking you about velocity, then, you know, Bohr model does give you an answer of velocity. And one thing we'll get to eventually as we cover quantum mechanics is that, um, that uh, velocity is not quite a meaningful quantity in quantum mechanics, uh, or there are very few contexts where velocity gives you something that's uh, meaningful. And so, um, so, so, you know, if any of these parts had asked about velocity, then you would give one based on the Bohr model of that orbiting electron, but with the understanding that um, that's not quite how we actually visualize electron in the fully quantum mechanically correct model of the hydrogen atom. 